On this morning's Health Watch, the enormous medical challenges in Haiti. Harry has been there all morning, along with our Dr. Jennifer Ashton, who has been helping victims of the earthquake around the clock. Good morning to you both. Yeah, morning, hi, Maggie. Meg. But what a lot of people want to know is this medical story and how critical, what a, how serious a crisis it is. Let's start on the small part. You've been working in one specific right. clinic, by and large. What is it like there? You know, um, at this particular clinic, the doctors and nurses are really doing the best they can, Harry. We have about 200 patients, and it, it can be pretty chaotic and uh, a little unorganized at times. You know, for example, there's no admitting area where these patients come in and get kind of processed. There's no triage area, there's no charts. You know, we're literally using pieces of paper scribbled on with some basic notes and it's being taped to the foot of their cots. There are no bathroom facilities for the patients there. So if they have to use a bathroom, they're using a bedpan in between their cot and the cot that's about 12 inches next to them where the next patient is lying. So the conditions are not good, but hopefully today we will be moving to a better and a slightly more sophisticated facility. Okay, and that's just your one little facility, right. how many more facilities, I mean, if you could wave a magic wand and make something significant happen, how many more would be needed to even begin to scratch the surface? Well, I think the answer to that question is unknown because we don't know the denominator of how many patients are critically injured. And we have to remember that it's not just the crush injuries from the earthquake, but the background events that go on every single day here, heart attacks, people with diabetes and high blood pressure who are getting worse now because they don't have any medication. Yeah. Though There are gonna be a lot more patients who need treatment. Talk to us a little bit about some of the patients you have treated and <laughs> you do the best you can under the circumstances immediately, what would be their long-term prognosis? Well, I think probably the two most gripping so far for us, Harry, one has been a six-month-old baby girl who sustained severe burns to about 50% of her body. And over the past three days, we've seen her condition deteriorate. The first time I trained, changed her dressing, she was crying, she was in pain. Obviously, those type of burns are excruciatingly painful. When I changed her dressing yesterday, she was listless, lethargic, her head was rolling back. You could tell that she is getting worse because she doesn't just have as, uh, access to more sophisticated care. We, we, there was a bright spot though. We took care of a two month old baby that was pulled out of rubble after being buried for three days mm -hmm. and she had multiple rib fractures. She would not have survived if she had stayed here on the island and she was actually yeah. airlifted to Miami where luckily she's in critical but stable condition. One of the things we talked about yesterday, late last night was this notion that if this had happened in the most sophisticated medical community on earth, it would have crushed the system Absolutely. or tested it to its limits. Absolutely. And there's no, there's very little system here at all. That's right. And in fact, what we're doing in our medical facility is when we, when we get there, we show up for our shift, so to speak. We just start walking down the aisle and we see a patient, we start taking care of them. There's really no system in place right now. All right. Thanks very much, Dr. Maggie, back to you. All right, Jen, Harry, thank you both.